हरि ओम एस टू दि प्रेयर ओम सहना सह नौ भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वी नाबीदमस्तुमाषावह ओ शाति 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 सुगुस्त्र चिन्मय व्यापीयत्सोक्यम सचराचर तत्पम दर्शित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओं श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओम लास्ट क्लास वी टॉक अबाउट टू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स नंबर वन दट आई एम लुकिंग फॉर इन्फाइनेट हैप्पीनेस इवन दो आई एम ऑलरेडी दैट बिकॉज वी गिव एन एग्जाम्पल द वन हु हैज नो मोर वासनास ही इज हैप्पी बाय हिमसेल्फ सो द सेल्फ दट ही इज हैप्पी विथ has to be infinite because we said everyone is looking for unlimited inexhaustible happiness and if he is contented with by himself so the self that he is contented with has to be infinite that means that self that he is already a brahman so i am atma brahma this vedanta this this atma this self that i am is indeed brahman means indeed infinite now the question is why i am looking for happiness if i am already in finite then we said i did not know so i do not know that i am in finite therefore i am looking for happiness because i am not recognizing that i am already happy so where is the problem the ignorance of my true nature is the problem that's what we said now the question is if ignorance is the root cause for all my pursuits because ignorance of myself is same as ignorance that i am already infinitely happy therefore i am since i do i have ignorance of myself i feel myself i am limited i am not infinite therefore i am finite and problem is since i am infinite and taking myself finite i don't like it therefore i want to become infinite so the pursuit for happiness becomes a struggle for life so if you look at this systematic analysis the fundamental problem is ignorance of myself or my true nature my true nature being infinite since i do not know that i am already infinite i take myself what i am not that means i take myself i am finite and when i take myself i am finite starting with i am this body because body is finite i am this mind so anything this is different from that so this is limited by that therefore this body is limited by all other bodies so therefore i am taking a limitation at the body level or the mind level or the intellect level as i am this and without recognizing two problems in the very definition because i am is a subject and this is an object this is a fundamental whether it's this is nothing to do with the religion now this is something basic fundamental issue because a subject i am and anything that i can point out as this is an object and when i ask you sir who are you say i am this so if i touch your leg you say you are touching me that means you are taking yourself the body as i am body is this you say at the same time you say i am equal to body therefore the subject is equated to the object subject can never be an object so i am taking already a fundamental error that's because the basic problem is i do not know who i am and we analyze this problem of error because called a superimposition error but fundamentally this is a problem because the basis is i have ignorance is the fundamental problem 
आई डू नॉट नो माय ट्रू नेचर नाउ लेट्स आस्क द क्वेश्चन सिंस व्हेन आई डिड नॉट नो दिस माय ट्रू नेचर व्हेन डिड आई नॉट नो माय ट्रू नेचर आर पुट इट अनदर वे व्हेन डिड दिस इग्नोरेंस ऑफ माय सेल्फ स्टार्टेड सर इग्नोरेंस नेवर स्टार्ट हा हाउ कैन दट बी सर लेट्स आस्क यू आई डोंट नो केमिस्ट्री सर डू यू नो केमिस्ट्री सर आई डोंट नो केमिस्ट्री वेन इज युअर इग्नोरेंस ऑफ केमिस्ट्री स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग आई डोंट नो इग्नोरेंस फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग फ्रॉम द बर्थ इट सेल्फ बिगिन सो देर फोर देर इज नो बिगिनिंग ऑफ इग्नोरेंस because if the ignorance has to begin before the ignorance began there has i should have been a knowledgeable person once i am knowledgeable i will never become ignorant therefore ignorance is called anadi anadi means beginningless there cannot be any beginning now look at this hierarchy of this analysis ignorance is the problem because of which i do not know myself who i am and therefore i am taking not myself as myself and i am trying to solve the problem by trying to become infinite when i cannot make finite into infinite and i cannot but try to make it infinite and the struggle is going on without realizing i am already infinite so what i need is a knowledge not any pursuits i need an knowledge that i am already infinite end of the story oh no if i am infinite why am i struggling okay continues to struggle because if i don't understand the basic problem i'm trying to solve the problem where there is no problem and we said that became a problem of life after life so if you look at the hierarchy ignorance is a problem and ignorance is anadi beginningless and because of the ignorance i take myself as a limited being I, i am this body this mind and this intellect and therefore i perform an action or oh, this body needs certain things oh i like this one i like that one so vasana starts accumulating when i use this body mind intellect to execute actions that i like and dislike and i develop vasanas in the process vasanas will propel desires desires will propel into agitations agitations into actions actions again will leave vasanas now i said we get into this will pull of eternal cycle of action and a janma to karma janma to karma and so on so if you look at the whole story ignorance is a beginningless because of the, of that i am taking myself what i am not as i am i am taking myself of i am a finite and i don't like that conclusion therefore i want to make it infinite by performing action by doing gaining this gaining that and this propels you into the likes and dislikes and vasanas and it becomes a continuous cycle so this is one aspect of it the second aspect in all along with it is this vasanas came from the actions now we know that we do we, when we ask the first first lecture we don't know what life we had before or if there's a life before or is there a life beyond how do we answer that question is there a means to address that question now let's look at individual life every time i perform an action i am getting a result of that action so if i make a good delicious food cook for it then there's a result is there for me to enjoy so whenever i perform an action i see the result there is a cause and there is an effect so every action and the result follow a cause effect relationship if i am an engineer because there is a cause for it cause is i went to an engineering school studied engineering and became the effect that i am an engineer if i am a doctor i went to a medical school and the effect is i became a doctor so i see this cause effect relationship seems to be valid from birth to death 
everything. If I put my finger into the fire, I, it, finger gets burned. There is a cause and there is an effect. It is the nature of the fire to burn. It doesn't care who puts the finger there. So this cause-effect relationship is valid from birth to death. Now suddenly we ask the question, what is the cause for my birth itself? Oh, there is no cause. So how can that be? I am valid, I am a value of the law is valid from birth to death. And suddenly at these two discontinuities, where are the birth and the death, suddenly the law doesn't say, you say it doesn't work. Therefore, just the extension of the logic of cause-effect relationship demands that there has to be a cause. Because we said some people are born with rich already, some people are mediocre and some people are very poor, some people with healthy body, some people even unhealthy. All these disparities are there in all beings. The difference is the very nature of the creation itself. One doesn't be look like the other one. Each leaf is different in the tree from the other. And this is the beauty of the creation itself. Then the question is, where the cause for those disparities? We cannot put a blame on the God because God, for all is a God, has to be impartial to everybody. Then only we call him a God. If he is going to be partial to these people, will be born as poor. Other people should be born as rich. That doesn't make any sense. In fact, I don't know why am I born. Some religion say somebody ate apple, therefore you are born. Say how can that be? If somebody does the action now, I have to be responsible for my action. If somebody is to big, is to go to engineering school, I don't become an engineer. I had to go to engineering school. I had to study for me to become a. That seems to be cause effect relationship. Therefore, implication is at this junction at the birth, there has to be a cause. What could be the cause? Cause is, I have a previous vasanas that are propelling me to take a birth in a particular parents or particular parents in a particular environment with a particular body to exhaust those vasanas that I have. So, one end of the story is, I had to provide a cause for my birth. Otherwise, there is a discontinu discontinuity in the cause-effect relationship. Now look at the other end. Other end is the death. We see lot of people doing all sorts of things. People uh, milking money at the expense of everybody else and they enjoy it, they kick the bucket. No suffering, no law can be put in them. And they will bribe even the judges so that they, are, they escape the law in this world. But they may escape the local law, but they cannot expect the, ex escape the universal law. For every effect, there has to be a cause. For every cause, there has to be an effect. The implication is, whatever the actions that they have done, they are accountable for their actions. Therefore, they have to be born in some environment where they have to experience the effects of these actions. There is no escape from this. This law is absolute. The cause-effect relationship demands that there has to be life before and there has to be life after in order to as long as there are vasanas. Follow now the whole structure. So, this life is propelled by the previous vasanas, life vasanas. So, if you look at the whole vasanas, we can say the total vasanas of, of a being is called sanchita karma, total account, of which I only bring into this life those are ready to germinate, ready to express themselves. So, I have to take an environment conducive to exhaust those particular vasanas. Therefore, I take a womb, I be born in a particular way to exhaust those vasanas that are ready to germinate. If I need a human body, I take a human body. If I need a plant body, I take a plant body, dictated by the vasanas that are ready to germinate. 
Therefore, the disparities is not some problem. It is my own problem. It is due to my own vasanas, which we call as a prarabdha karma. We have a total account of Sanjita karma. What we bring is a prarabdha karma. In the human form, I have a will to act, which we explain slowly. And in the process, I accumulate new vasanas. And the new vasanas that I accumulate which cannot be exhausted in this life or put it back into my account again and that's called Agami Karma. So we have total account Sanchita Karma, Prarabdha Karma which we brought, a new account that, that comes out and put it back into the account called Agami Karma. So this cycle of life goes on and on as long as I have Vasanas. So now we need to know when to end the Vasanas. Now we ask the question, when did the first vasana started? Remember, the basic cause is ignorance. Ignorance is beginningless. Therefore, the first is also beginningless. There is no first. It is a continuous, eternal cycle of but death, but death cycle. And I am already caught up in this because of this beginningless ignorance, which is an obi. But ignorance can end. Ignorance of my chemistry can end even though ignorance is beginningless, it can end with knowledge. Similarly, the self-ignorance also can end by self-knowledge. Chemistry ignorance is removed by chemistry knowledge. Physics ignorance is removed by physics knowledge. Self-ignorance is to be removed by self-knowledge. That has to be understood. But this self-knowledge is the knowledge that eliminates all other problems. And that's what Vedanta tells us. And that's what we are going to talk about. Arigo. So you do Purnamada. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om